lot easier to prevent diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease than it is uh, for us to do an expensive coronary artery bypass surgery or a drug coated stent. Uh, this uh, conference that Bill uh, mentioned in Washington was uh, really quite <coughs> eye opening. There's a lot of excitement around the country uh, addressing uh, this problem and how we get people healthier uh, through physical activity and uh, nutrition. And uh, perhaps Bill will uh, amplify on, on some of those things. But uh, I think it's an exciting project. I'm anxious to be a part of it. And we've got a lot of volunteers uh, all working uh, in this area. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I want to go back to, to uh, some data that may have passed the screen pretty quickly, but I, I want to stop and have us pause and think about it. And that's data around uh, race and ethnicity um, and income. If you had a chance before running to breakfast with Bill uh, to see the headline in the Chicago Tribune, it reads, More Americans Fall Into Poverty. Uh, and there's a long article, a little bit on the front page and a, and a full page in the, uh, in the body of the newspaper. I think it's very instructive that there are two photos. The two photos are people at food banks. So when you think poverty, please think about the huge impact this has on families and children with respect to healthy eating. The two photos are of folks trying to make ends meet around food. And, and so I'd like to suggest that um, poverty, income, is also an incredibly important factor in this whole issue of childhood obesity. The charts at the bottom, which are nearly impossible to read, and there's no, there's no um, narrative in the article about the charts, reflect the differences in poverty by race and by ethnicity. So I'd like to suggest that not only in the state of Illinois, where this article really focuses, but in Evanston, um, children who are brown, children who are black, children who live in poverty really have to capture our attention. What, what I found in Washington with uh, a dozen or more communities represented, all of whom had a couple of Y folks and, and a much larger number of community folks representing their community, where the real energy and the real drive came was from issues of social justice and issues of health disparity and inequity in communities. That, that further fueled um, the zeal, the, the focus, the attention, the commitment around childhood obesity. Brian, why don't we go to the next slide. So over the course of a number of years, communities throughout the country convened by the YMCA, but not run by the YMCA, have begun to address this issue of childhood obesity. The statewide initiatives, those states where the YMCA of the USA said, let's really try to focus some resources and, and see if we can create statewide momentum, are in the light blue colors. So, so, uh, I'm going to ask some folks who are, are much more articulate than I to come up and talk about the, the foci, if you will, of pioneering healthier communities. They are empathy, data, community leadership, and then this whole issue of policy, systems, and environment. Please really think. Um, we're, we're not here to talk about another fun run or farmer's market as important and as powerful as they can be. We're talking about a change of mindset and a change of focus to direct our energy and resources around policy, system, and environmental change to really move the needle, to really make a difference. While Tim said it's easier to prevent diabetes than to treat it, it ain't easy, uh, especially if we're focused on policy, systems, and environment. So would Monique and Tim and Sandra and Matt uh, come up and join me for a second and they're going to share just uh, a moment with you about each one of these uh, key topics and Monique I think you start with, start uh, with empathy. empathy and actually um, it's a good lead off from 
what Bill just shared with you about poverty and how it affects a lot of our black and brown communities. So PHC inspires change through empathy. Um, this is a process by which all individuals understand the unique historic relations that exist within a community. Uh, building empathy through this community-based approach will highlight the inequities um, or they will highlight inequitable policy and environmental changes locally. A core function of empathy is applying what is known to action. So not just stopping by reading the newspaper, but then taking that information and doing something. For an example, it may mean creating policy and system changes that necessitate the, int the intentional and explicit examination of equity and what it means in the context of building healthier communities. Great, thank you. And, and I hope when, when we're done, uh, all of us will, will uh, have a conversation. And uh, certainly Monique and Sandra, Matt, Tim, <coughs> Seth, Reverend Dennis, uh, let, let's all be part of this conversation. Um, data, so far you've seen only BMI data. Um, so uh, Dr. Sanborn and Ivana Thomas, who is one of our PHC community team members, are focused on data at this point in order to try to understand what data can we collect and, and establish as a baseline so that we can truly measure our success as we go forward. Tim, do you want to say a few words about data? Sure. What, um, what we're doing with uh, PHC is to look uh, and focus primarily on the, uh, the preschool uh, age group, uh, zero to five years of age, uh, to go in uh, at some of the preschool uh, programs that are working with uh, children and families, um, and specifically to uh, analyze and address issues such as what are the, the physical uh, activities that are available in some of these preschool environments? Uh, do they have a place? Uh, do they have a playground? Uh, do they spend time uh, with activities so that uh, they're uh, encouraging uh, children and, and families to exercise regularly? They're also looking uh, at dietary uh, environments? Uh, are they discussing what a healthy meal uh, truly is? Uh, are they discussing the, uh, the need to uh, obtain uh, fresh uh, fruits and uh, vegetables and uh, perhaps uh, not go to McDonald's uh, as Bill uh, indicated with the uh, billboard sign? Uh, just to get a discussion going uh, in some of these um, preschool uh, educational programs and also uh, to cover family issues um, and getting families to start thinking about uh, physical activity and uh, better nutrition. Uh, it's an analytical tool uh, and it will allow some of these uh, programs to uh, ask, you know, how are we doing? What are we doing right? Uh, where could we improve uh, in our education of, of uh, families uh, on uh, developing a healthier living? So that's what the this uh, Community Health Living Index, or CHILI, uh, score is. And we'll have more uh, to present to you uh, at another date. Uh, so far, I believe we've got over 700 uh, children uh, surveyed uh, in some of these uh, preschool uh, programs. Thank you. 700 children in the last several weeks. So this is off to a roaring start. With great support from Martha Arnson, who is Executive Director of the Child Care Network of Evanston, who is part of the team. Uh, she is really vitally important to help us get and connect with um, child care providers um, throughout the community who can help us uh, with this setting an initial uh, baseline for our data. Sandra, do you, know, do you want to talk a little bit about community leadership? I'd love to. Good morning. <clears throat> Forgive my voice. Uh, as we talk about community leadership, for which some of you represented this morning, um, that's really the crux of our effort to convene. It's only the only job that, that the Y has. The real work begins when we come together, all our different persuasions with all our talents, uh, to tackle problems of healthy living, um, childhood obesity, bring about healthy living through activity and, and eating healthier. So it will take every one of us, and that is our intention to bring you all together so that we can tackle this problem with 
as much talent as, that we have in our community. We know we're very, very talented. Great, thank you. Matt. Good morning. <clears throat> um, I was going to do this off the cuff, but there's a, I'm going to talk about policy systems, environmental change, and there's a really good power, uh, PDF of a PowerPoint done by the Minnesota Department of Health that explains it very clearly. So you can go on the web and look up policy systems, environmental change, PSE, and you'll get this whole PowerPoint. And I'm going to read a couple of examples and some of the definitions to help explain it because it's a very... It's, a, it's been a challenge for us to even understand as a team, as we've done this for a few months, what, what the heck does PSE mean? Um, so policy. Policy is an intervention, maybe a law, ordinance, resolution, or rule. And an example is an organizational policy that provides time off during work for physical activity. So that's policy and, and a policy example. Systems. Interventions are changes that impact all elements of an organization, institution, or system. So types of system are schools, transportation, parks, and recreation. Um, and we have many of those connected to us through District 65. Dr. Hardy Murphy is on our team. Um, that's systems. And then environmental are interventions that involve physical or material changes to the economic, social, or physical environment. Sidewalks paths, recreation areas, integrating those into community design and really thinking about how we can have broader walkways, um, giving people opportunities to walk and bike more versus take the car. So that's PSE very quickly. Um, the two examples that are in this document that we've used as far as what has been successful in PSE change are um, smoking. In the 1960s is really when governments and putting labels on um, <coughs> cigarettes and uh, all the different changes, the, the workplace smoking and the secondhand smoke, there were at all different levels, governments had to set policies in place in order to ban smoking in workplaces. But it's taken decades to make those changes and really to start seeing the impact that it's having on our society. And that's the type of work we're going to be doing. It's not, hopefully not decades and decades, but um, it's not going to change next year, and we don't expect it to change next year. We expect it to take three, five, ten years, because this is a huge issue in our society that we have to address. Another example are automobile safety, and what happened with child safety seats. Um, those were not required back in the day. Um, wearing seat belts were not required. All of those things, policy change, environmental systematic change over time in order for us to get to the point where we are now. And the point in this as well is we've saved billions and millions of dollars once we've made those changes. And I think one of the, the quotes is, for the safety seats in the automobile, save society $585 billion in medical care, lost productivity, and other injury-related economic costs since 1975. So to Tim's point, um, we want to shift as far as the health care cost issue um, being more preventative and um, addressing things earlier on um, versus uh, having what Tim's dealing with now. So that's PSE. Thank you.